what's one trend in the legal world that you're finding really interesting right now? To paraphrase Derek Zoolander, um, ChatGPT is so hot right now. Um, law firms, people outside of legal, everybody's asking me about that. And I think it's a super interesting thing for legal in particular because the AI is really good and the responses it generates are highly impressive. I don't think it's ready for prime time yet, but there's a lot of potential for that tool. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it and using it in my practice and it is... It, it cuts down writing time by at least 50 or 60%, if not more. And it does amazing things and it's super inexpensive. Um, it's, you still need to check sites and you still need to do the work, but it, boy, it gets you started. And for me, the thing that I'm seeing is um, with all the technology tools coming out and the expectations for getting stuff done more efficiently are, are really going up. And, I think we're at an inflection point and that's just me. Bill Gates is like, we're at an inflection point, like of the eight track tape to the cassette, to the, to the DVD and streaming services that if those who don't figure out how to use this technology to get efficient and effective, um, they're the same ones that, you know, are more longing for their mimeograph machine. Yeah. So it's funny though, cause this directly impacts a lot of people are asking me, can I use it to put content on my website? And I actually just spoke about this at the ABA tech show. And the thing is, is that Google used to say, if you wrote anything with AI, it was considered spam. And they've kind of changed their tune a little bit now. What they're saying is that as long as you produce, and probably because they have their own AI coming out, right? <laughs> um, right. So um, I think that they are saying that the best quality content is what is still going to make it to the top of Google. What's interesting, it is not ready for prime time. Um, I typed in the other day, um, who owns Lockwell or who founded Lockwell? And they put all of these names. And I said, no, that's not right. Try again. And they said all of these names. And I'm like, no, that's still not right. I go, did Annette Chody start Lockwell? And they were like, no, she didn't. We don't see any mention of her on that website. <laughs> The only one on the website. ChatGPT stole your business. That's important. <laughs> so I actually made a LinkedIn post about it and thanked everybody that started Lockwell because apparently they all started Lockwell. Um, <laughs> so I thank them for, for that. Um, I do think that what will become sort of a new new job is to be an AI whisperer, right? Because the way that you're putting in the prompts matters. And the more specific, the more detailed, frankly, you're almost, I mean, I, you know, I should probably trademark this, right? But you're keywording the prompts almost in the sense that because, because, you know, they're not our robot overlords quite yet. And so they're just pulling this information from the interweb, right? So if you keyword your query accurately, um, I think you get a more effective answer. I don't think it's ready for prime time yet. I still think that there will always be a human element involved in in SEO, in content writing, right? Something that sounds more, I, I do feel, and maybe you guys can speak to this too, I do feel like a lot of the responses that I've seen are sort of very vanilla, pl plain, ro robot, for lack of a better word, robotic. Robot. Well, what, what I've seen, and you're, a, you're right, Annette, as I've used it more the, more, the more you become a power user of it and you know how to tell it what persona to assume, what level of expertise to assume, what level to write to, um, it, it, it can be a very powerful tool. It's not ready to take it, copy, paste it, and submit it to court or to a client. But if you wanted to uh, take your retainer letter and say, rewrite this to an eighth grade level so my clients could understand it, it would do that. And it would probably be better and faster than you could do by, your, by yourself. And I think that's say, the, oh, so, go sorry. ahead. Yeah. I was just gonna say one more thing. I, I totally agree with you, especially, it's no different than using templates, right? That we use, right? Right. I mean, we don't recreate the same contract every single time. Well, I hope you don't. Um, the, the other thing though, that I tell a lot of my clients that are interested or, or lawyers thinking about using this is that at the end of the day, 
it for my purposes anyway, Google has to put 10, you know, I mean, there has to be a first page of Google. So if all of those people are using the same chat GPT to answer the question, the difference between wills versus trusts, right? And they're all using that same platform. What Google is going to choose, I think, what it's going to, what is going to stand out is something that, that is better quality written by a human, I think. Yeah, I think it's, what's interesting, Nick, is this kind of highlights, I, I see your net, Annette, from a, from an SEO perspective, yeah, hundred percent. That's your expertise. I, I look at it as what are the ways that lawyers can accelerate and simplify the back office to write a more effective communication to a client, to take their raw notes and summarize it into themes that the client can digest and say, "This is what I heard." That the the drudgery work that goes into being a lawyer can be accelerated dramatically, so they can spend their time doing more substantive legal work with tools like chat GPT, because it's not, it, it's not current information, right? It, it's limited to back in 2021. So I see a lot of utility for it. And hey, I need to write a demand letter to this client, how can I do it in a way that is that is friendly and doesn't cause them to sue me, and it'll give you some options, and you can ask it to rewrite. So I think the adoption of tools like this, and thinking differently about how to do things is um, is going to be you know a game changer. And this is just the most recent thing. Yeah, I think yeah. you got to be really rigorous about the prompts. I think Annette is right. Yeah. I kind of view it as like it's both an it's both like a de facto office assistant that's intelligent enough that you can have back and forth conversations with it, but it also reminds me of my kids because if I want my kids to do anything, I have to be extremely literal. And provide step by step directions. And that's Chat GPT, because if you give it any kind of leeway at all, it's going to stay up until 10 o'clock when you told it to go to bed at 8 15, speaking from that's personal beautiful. experience. 